about this for a second, okay? It is it, – they may just think that this is just such a minor thing and it's a, a promotion for them to be able to sell more groceries or people to spend in there because realistically it's the kids that are causing the pressure to the parents. Yeah. It's teaching them addiction. And then the parents, like, get into fist fights over a f- banana. That's right. Well, last year it launched and it saw tens of thousands of Australian parents form or join online swapping networks whilst thousands more attended swap meets across the country to complete their collections, which ended up in fistfights. And now all of those collections they spend hundreds of dollars on and probably a couple of lost teeth. We Where said, are they? We said in the very, we said in the very first uh, podcast uh, of The Burble that to get them all, if you chanced it, to get all of them, it was going to cost you 900 Australian dollars just in uh, Normal gros- shop. In groceries alone. Yeah, if you got, you got one that was not unique every time. I mean, that was, so unique, was unique, unique every, every yeah, yeah. time. So this year, what have they got? So they've got some A2 Long Life milk. They've got peas. They've got a bread. Uh, Vegemite's back. They've got Latina fresh pasta. Um, coffee's back, obviously. They've got Toothpaste. shapes. Toothpaste. Yeah, they've got Eclipse mints. This f-ing razor. It is. It's Gillette razors. There's a Gillette razor. Yeah, it f- All right. <laughs> There's also a Coles gift card down here. Ah, uh, teaching kids to use credit. There's some uh, cream of ole. And Is that? Hang on. Go back next to the gift card. That's finished dishwasher cleaner. Yep. What the actual f- Coles? Like, hang on. <laughs> Why would a kid want to collect a dishwasher cleaner? It's not even the dishwasher tablets. No. It's the f- cleaner you put in there after your bloody crotch nuggets have filled up the dishwasher <laughs> way too much and the f- food filter's all clogged. Now, listen, as um, look, here's the secret this time around because I'm onto you, Coles. I'm onto you. I reckon they're lightly dusted with cocaine. That's Probably. how the kids keep coming back. They're so, all no, no, no. Just, just shut up. Listen to me. All right. So here's the folder. Here's the presentation folder we're looking at right now on the internet, okay? Yep. Guess what they do. So... Nothing. No, 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 no. It was an afterthought last year. It was an afterthought to do the presentation folders. Oh, that's right. This year, they get the presentation folders early. And so they go, I don't have this. I don't have that. So thus, addiction is 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 thriving. With- and and it's promoting OCD. It is. Like, These if kids- you imagine the dishwasher cleaner was missing out of that set. Yeah. And it was that was the only one. Yep. The kids would be like doing Tourette's ticks, going, need finish dishwasher cleaner. Mom, go and buy groceries. Go and buy more groceries. Exactly. And then yeah. wouldn't it happen in my day? Cole's little shop is directly affecting Napland, I think, because these kids aren't focusing on their schooling. All they're focusing on is just getting small plastic pieces of McShit yes. to put in a plastic piece of McShit folder and they're going nuts about it. I, I would love to see at the end of this run that right. Coles are doing to see whether or not it affects kids. And uh, you could probably pinpoint it with NAPLAN studies to see whether or not locations have actually been affected thus by Coles Minis. Now, let me tell you, an online petition is circulating. Good. And calling on the supermarket giant to stop giving out plastic junk to children in a bid to drive shoppers through the door. So, wow, but wow. That's what a lot of people are saying about it now. And this time around, people are now saying, look, look how much plastic waste ends up in landfills every year. For example, as you know, the um, spring water bottles you can get, Yep. Natural spring water yep. and all that. One point three billion end up in landfill. That's a lot of tap water. What about straws? What about those brightly oh, coloured? Don't get on the straw controversy. Straws, two point four seven billion. Coffee cups, two point six billion. Plastic bags, three point three billion. You know, that was last year. This year it's like four because they're like gold. No, oh, pretty much. That's exactly right. But what about the the biodegradable ones? I still use those as bins and throw them in the bin. Oh, you know the ones you buy. Yeah, the ones you buy. They biodegrade, but they biodegrade faster than the old grey ones. Do they really? I left some in my car on the back seat. And they the melted? Sun, and they basically turned to dust. I've got to go buy more. It's like self-destroying bloody shit. You know when you buy a stereo or a microwave and it only lasts exactly one day past the warranty period? Yes. This is what these bags are doing now like you go in there and you, they know you didn't bring them with you so either you f-ing hoof it all down like you put it in your pockets and you carry it and you bloody drop it or you buy a bag so what do you do 
You give up, you buy bags, yep. you take your shit inside, you put it away, you get all the bags, and you go, I'm going to put them in my car so they'll be right there next time. But you never do. No, no you throw them on the back seat. Yeah. Because you couldn't be asked. Okay. As I've got to tell you something. I'm ranting. So my, no, 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 no. My fiance. Yes. Because we we've discussed this many times on this podcast that we both forget mm. to take the bags from the car yep. up to the shop. That's right. And go and purchase things, put them in the bags. And then hoof back down the car. Yes. You know the green ones? The ones that are like... The, oh, the clothy sort the of ones. The cloth ones? Yeah. So we've amassed a few of them. Mm. Would you like to know the number of how many we've got? I would love to know how many you've got. <laughs> she was doing a bit of a clean Way up. too many, isn't it? There's 89. 80 f- Nine. There's 89. Wow. That's it. Like, that's that's enough for you to almost get all of the Coles minis if you go and fill them up. Mate, 89 bucks. I could have bought two boxes of piss with that. You did the math. She did the math. Wow. I'm just How much was it worth? What do you mean? Like the bags. They're like a buck. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah, 90 that's bucks. near two okay. bucks. I could yep. have bought like a box of piss in the car. Could have got some nice like imported piss. Could have got some, no- yes, exactly. Could have got some of that. But just looking at it now, it but it's in trickles and trails. Do you know what I mean? She'll go to the shops. I'll go to the shops. She'll go to yeah. the shops. But those f- don't biodegrade. No, they don't. The, the other ones do. And as I was saying before, I left some in the back seat of my car. And when I go to work, we have an outside car park. So I park my car outside and I put the sunshine across the, the windscreen. But the, the back windows stay in the sun. And these bags sat in there in the sun for about two weeks. And now they've just disintegrated. <laughs> so, <laughs> f- you. Well, listen, what we should need to do about Coles, basically, is use our Boycott. wallets. No, we'll use our wallets as voices and just don't shop there. I don't shop there because I hate the car park there. Coles is shit house. It's weird. It's a weird car park and you're most likely going to run into someone or someone's going to scrape your car and then fuck off and then not tell you that they've done it. Yeah. So, Coles, four, if I had them, four thumbs down. You hot dog stricken face floozies. Loose talk. Even looser opinions. This is the best show on earth. This is The Burble. So one last thing we need to mention before we wrap up here is that the United States House uh, wants to know whether or not the country's Defence Department has experimented with weaponized ticks. Ticks. And other insects. And if they were ever unleashed on the public. Now, hang on a minute. How do you... Like, ticks are pretty fucking bad at, at the best stage. Well, in America, they're worse. They give you Lyme disease over there. Lyme di- Well, that's what they're claiming. That's what they're claiming. Well, they this- reckon they weaponize Lyme disease. Well, they reckon that the Department of Defense experimented with ticks and other insects regarding use as a biological weapon between the years of 1950 and 1975. You know so, what? What? Well, this is how you get Spider-Man, mm. isn't it? When, 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 when was Spider-Man invented? 1960-ish. Okay. Well, listen, look. Maybe. They want to know. They want to know. Shut up with the comic book shit. <laughs> they want to know whether or not any ticks or insects were used in experiments were released outside of any laboratory by accident or experimental design. Now, ticks at the at their best are awful because you've really got to grab them in a specific way to, you know, yank them out there. Like if you've taken your dog for a walk through the bush or – you took your dog. one of those tick removers. It looks like like a bottle opener. You've got to pull it the right way. Otherwise, yeah. the head stays in there and then shit goes bad. Yes, very bad. But Australian I... ticks don't give you Lyme disease. We don't have Lyme disease over here. Mm. Australian ticks will just... Well, we've got paralysis ticks. I, that's probably even worse. Yeah. Um, blue it, ringed ticks, I think, as well. Blue ring ticks. US government banned research into biological weapons back in 69, which is a f***ing lie. I think this they is what... They banned this, shit. They didn't ban shit. I think they this They weaponized is... dolphins for f- sake, Benny. Or sharks with freaking lasers. Literally did. They banned it. However, uh, this research into uh, protecting the country's military personnel may have actually continued. New investigations could provide um, some really, really damning information confirming that there is a connection between these insect experiments and the spread of Lyme disease has. Do you reckon the US would have done it? Well, they they um, they sprayed a chemical all over, I think it was Detroit back in the 50s to see what had happened. Right. So these... Hang on a minute. One of the biggest manufacturing cities in the US. I don't know if it was Detroit. I can't remember. My brain is not up to the task of retrieving that information. He hasn't touched an alcoholic drink for this podcast. No, I have not. I've got which, a, which I'm ashamed about. I've got a large cup of tea. But um, no, they experimented in a whole city. And then don't forget the whole smallpox thing where they gave all of the um, African-American dudes um, herpes, you remember? Yeah, but also remember as well, towards the end of World War II, Japan planned 
to wage biological warfare in Southern California. It was a plot dubbed Operation Cherry Blossoms at night. Which Sounds nice. They were going to use planes loaded with plague-infested fleas. Me, that's dark. None of that eventuated. No, but they've been doing this shit for years, and they they always experiment on the public. This is why I love having Foxtel, because I get C-SPAN, so I can't wait till this gets brought up in Congress. So basically you can say, um, did you weaponize ticks? But then the great Cheeto monster is just going to turn up and go, it's fake news, build a wall, and then everyone's just going to go, yeah, cool, and just forget about it, because that's like the level of politics over there at the moment. Loose talk, even looser opinions. The Burble. Thank you very much for joining us on this podcast. We are available on our website, theburble.com.au, every single podcast that we have done since day dot. We're also available on Apple Podcasts. Now, we would love you to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and leave a review as well. We would love that. Now, we're also available on iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio. Spotify. Spotify. Spreaker, that's our podcast partner. You'll find all of our episodes there as well. And Download suddenly. the app for Spreaker because yeah. you can also get some other great um, podcasts as well, not just the Burble. We're available on Google Podcasts. YouTube. And not in Australia. That's what I was waiting for you to say. Oh, not in Australia. Not in Australia, yet. So we've got the American audience there and also CastBox as well. That's right. We did have a bit of a discussion uh, prior to this podcast about extra content that we would like to eventually give to you, and we are very seriously looking at Patreon. So uh, we are looking for you to become uh, Patreon fans of The Burble, have a little bit of money, hand it over, all that kind of Mm. thing, because we're looking at actually expanding not just this podcast, but Burble Podcast Productions as well, to incorporate other podcasts to be able to do. We're looking at some video content as we are. We want to do some stuff uh, for you guys, some live streams maybe even. Imagine how good it would be to be able to get a private stream to be able to watch what we're doing as we record this podcast. And for those of you who haven't actually worked out what we're saying under the beeps on the uh, on the podcast, perhaps even some uncensored raw content. content. Yeah. Exactly right. We're going to be back next week right here on The Burble. Until then, see ya. See ya. Is it over yet? The answer is yes. Oh, thank God for that. Hit us up on the socials and check us out at theburble.com.au. And don't forget to subscribe and share us with all your mates. Thank you for sharing. And here's the good news. They're back next week. Really? That's good news? It's great news. Here's the taste. Don't buy this product. It's f***ing shit.